Hi everyone, welcome back to Frappe School. This is our second chapter in Human Resource Management course. Today, we will discuss the topic on Employee Lifecycle Management. By the end of this chapter, we will be able to understand Employee Onboarding, Employee Skill Maps, Employee Promotion and Transfers, and Employee Separation. Let's understand the basic definition of Employee Lifecycle. Employee life cycle refers to the various stages that an employee goes through during their tenure in their organization. An employee's life cycle is categorized into five stages recruitment, onboarding, development, retention and exit. Whether it is hiring an employee, their growth within their team or across other teams or even their exit, all of these are part of an employee's life cycle. In today's world, companies that offer great employee experience tend to have an edge while attracting and retaining employees. It is important to thoughtfully design and execute these experiences in your organization as well. To do that, it becomes very important to keep a clear account of every employee's life cycle. An employee's life cycle helps provide the organization with reliable information about an employee's journey and experience. It even indicates what part of the employee's life cycle needs to be paid more attention to which inevitably helps reduce the employee turnover. Let's see how employee life cycle management works in ERP next. To understand all the features and processes of an employee life cycle, we need to make sure we have an employee created in the system to work with. To view a list of all the current employees added to your system, you can go from home to the HR module and click on employee in the employee master. If you want to create a new employee, you can do that here using the add employee button. Now. Let's talk about onboarding. Onboarding an employee is arguably one of the most important parts of an employee's life cycle. It is a stage where a new employee is introduced to your organization, gets familiar with the operation and learns about the organization and their job in detail. It is also necessary to make sure that onboarding activities for every employee are tailored to their designation, grade, and department. This will ensure that the new employee gets the right training and the right onboarding procedure. In ERP Next, you can create an employee onboarding template to help you with this process. To access the template list, you can navigate from home to the HR module and click on Employee Onboarding Template under Employee Lifecycle. To create a new template, you can do it here in Add Employee Onboarding Template. Here, we can define a designation, department and grade for this template. For example, we can set the department to sales and the designation to manager, etc. The Activities section will contain tasks that need to be completed for an employee to be successfully onboarded. Let's add some examples. Once an employee is hired, we will need to create an email ID for them. So we can type in email ID as a description and even assign another employee to whom this task will be assigned. Another example of a task we can add, add to communication channels. We can add as many tasks as we require and assign appropriate users to each one. Now, we can use this template for any new employee it applies to and all the details we have mentioned will be pulled in from this template when we use it for employee onboarding. Once we save the template we have created, we can create a new employee onboarding from here itself using the employee onboarding button at the top. Or, we can navigate to employee onboarding under employee life cycle in the HR module. Click on New Employee Onboarding and select the onboarding template here. We can now select the job applicant's details, which will automatically fetch their name. Then select their job offer details and their date of joining. 
Since we have created this onboarding from a template, the tasks will automatically be imported. We can still add to the activities section if we want anything specific to this particular employee. Once we have added all necessary details, we can save and permanently submit the onboarding form. Once we submit it, we can see this as a project in the system. All the details we had added in the activity section will show up as tasks in this project. When we open a particular task, for example, we open the create email ID task, we can assign this task to another employee and update the status and when the task was completed and add the date of completion. We can do this for all pending tasks. Once all the tasks have been completed, the status of the onboarding will change to completed. Each and every employee in your organization will require to have a certain level of skills depending on what their job is. An employee skill map will help record and track any specific employee skill. To navigate to the employee skill map list in ERP Next, we can go from home to the HR module and click on employee skill map under employee lifecycle. Once we create a new skill map here in add employee skill map, we can select an employee for whom we want to create the skill map. Their name and designation will be automatically filled. In the previous chapter, we had filled in the skills for each designation in the designation form. Here, we can select specific skills from that set and add it to this employee's skill map. Let's add a few examples of skills this employee will require. Since we have selected Lynette and her designation as an accountant in the accounts department, some of her required skills could be Spreadsheet proficiency. Once we select the skill, we need to add the current proficiency the employee has for that skill and also input the date at which this skill was evaluated. We can add another skill, for example, uh, analytical skills and enter proficiency and date of evaluation details as well. If an employee needs to improve at a certain skill, we can also add training events for these skills if necessary. For example, if the employee requires training in spreadsheet proficiency, then we can add a training event called as spreadsheet training and add a training date as well. An employee skill map basically shows and records an employee's skill, training and assessments based on their designation or role. Once we have added all the skills and training details, we can save this. Now, let's look at a few more features we can perform with regards to employee life cycle. As an employee advances in their career, their designation may change and they may be up for a promotion. In ERP Next, we can record this promotion in Employee Promotion. To navigate to Employee Promotion from home, we can go to the HR module and click on Employee Promotion under Employee Life Cycle. We can record a new promotion here in Add Employee Promotion. We can first select the employee, for example, Lynette, add the date of promotion and then in the details, we can go to designation, add their current designation and their new designation. You can now save those details.
if an employee is shifting cities they may start working at another branch of your organization this will require us to record the transfer of an employee to another branch we can use a similar process like we did in employee promotion to navigate to employee transfer we can go from home to the hr module and click on employee transfer under employee life cycle we can record a new transfer here in add employee transfer for example if we want to transfer lynette from the chicago branch to the new york branch we will first select lynette in the employee section and set the transfer date in the details section we will select the property as branch and the current branch will appear then select new york as a new branch we can now save these details if we go back to the main employee form we will be able to see how the promotion and transfer updates have been reflected here in the history in company table employee separation is the last stage of an employee's life cycle it means when an employee leaves the organization just as in employee onboarding employee separation also requires a specific template and certain tasks to be completed for a smooth transition an employee separation template is like a blueprint that contains a list of activities or tasks that need to be completed based on the employee's department designation and grade to navigate to employee separation template list from home we can go to the hr module and click on employee separation under employee life cycle we can create a new template here by using add employee separation template we can first define a designation department and grade for this template for example we can set the department to sales and the designation to manager etc next we will add details in the activity section which will basically define tasks that need to be completed to successfully separate the employee from the organization let's add some examples once this employee leaves we will need to disable their email id so we can type in disable email id in the description and assign another employee who will be required to complete this action another example is to conduct an exit interview we can add as many tasks as we need and save the template once done now we can use this template for any relevant employee that is leaving the organization we can create a new employee separation from the template itself using the employee separation button at the top or we can navigate to employee separation under employee life cycle in the hr module click on new employee separation select the employee and the template here once you select the template the activities details will be automatically imported but we can still add more tasks if we need to add anything specific to this employee if an exit interview has been conducted we can add a summary here once we have added all the details we can save and permanently submit the employee separation form similar to the onboarding procedure once we submit it we can see this as a project in the system all the details we have added in the activities section will show up as tasks in this project when we open a particular task for example we open the disable email id task we can assign this task to another employee and update the status as and when this task is completed and add the date of completion we can do this for all the other pending tasks once all the tasks have been completed the status of the employee separation will change to completed this brings us to the end of our second chapter i hope 
you are able to understand the importance of employee life cycle management. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will learn about employee attendance management. Thank you.